Real YouTubers make the tier list. Some of these Pokemon are very strong. Uh, it's not getting any better. I've had this mouse for a while. I actually feel like it might just be a, a skill issue at this point. Anyway, what's going on everybody? Today we are talking about how good the new Pokemon that are going to be legal in Regulation D, aka the Pokemon that were brought over from Pokemon Home to... Pokemon Home to... Pokemon Home to Scarlet and Violet, how how good these guys are, how good these little these little Pokemons are. Now, full disclosure. Why don't we start this with a little disclosure? That's the best way to start every every video, right? So, um, hmm. delete. Okay. Um. So full disclosure, I have not played a single game of Regulation D, aka the the format where these Pokemon are legal. So. You're probably thinking, Wolf, why are you making a tier list when you haven't played any of the format? And the reason is simple. I, I did a lot of my kind of um, tier list content before I played any competitive Pokemon for Scarlet and Violet. And I was actually really surprised at how on the money I was. Like I called a lot of Pokemon being really good way before they were meta. Like way, way, way before they were meta. Um, One example is Palafin. I said very early on, I thought it was like the best new Pokemon. I don't know if it was the best, but like peep, nobody was using Palafin at first. And then, I mean, we all saw how that ended up. Um, Bax Calibur called out way before it was used. And then it won the first event and is like a, a meta Pokemon and was a big part of the Palance team. Um, there's been other stuff as well. Like if you look at my, if you go back and watch those videos, like I made every one of those videos having never touched the format. Like another big one was I like, called Gyarados being good way early, like super, super, super like months, months and months before anyone really thought to use it. And then it became like, Right now, it's maybe the premier intimidator of the format, which is like, or at least of regulation C. So all that to say, I don't feel bad for not having played the format because even though like, of course, with experience, like I would have more like uh, short term knowledge. I think that like there's something to be said about not being influenced by what people are currently using when making your um, kind of inferences. So yeah, so that's basically where I'm coming from. So basically a big story of this, uh, this kind of format is going to be the legendary Pokemon and some of the Hisuian Pokemon starting with Hisuian Arcanine. Um, so Hisuian Arcanine, it's fire and rock type. I don't think it's that much better than uh regular Arcanine. Let's pull this up here really quick. Uh, I'm just gonna have this open as a reference. Since again, I'm not as familiar with all the Pokemon. This isn't going to be a super fast, uh, video. Hisuian Arcanine, Intimidate, Flash, Fire, and Rock Head. So it can ignore recoil um i think it gets head smash is the main one it gets raging fury which is i think fire type outrage it does not get head smash via level up um it's gonna egg move so <sighs> hisuian arcanine i'm gonna put in the c tier arcanine is good intimidate is good rock and fire typing is bad um a cargo being the main one colossal as well but colossal had you know one of the best abilities in the game and even um even, you know, like now Colossal's in the game and it still wasn't especially good because it didn't have Dynamax. So Fire and Rock typing is really bad. Arcanine stats are good. Um, and I'm sure that there's like a set with like Choice Band, Jolly Nature, Flare Blitz, Rock Head that could do well, Extreme Speed, stuff like that. But um, yeah, I don't think that it's going to be meta because it's just like, it's not that fast. We've gotten a lot of speed control with the addition of like the Genies. Um, and it's just overall not not super like good and, and it's weak to intimidate so i think it's a cool like i love the design i think it's a cool like looking pokemon it's not horrible by any means but it's not going to be meta hisuian electrode i'm putting an f now hisuian electrode might be d uh it's a little bit better than regular electrode because it is a an electric and grass type which is good typing and it's an electric type that isn't weak to ground and it gets this move where is it ah Chloro chloroblast which i believe it's a 150 base power move which is great however i think it does 50 percent of the user's health um even if it doesn't connect i think it's kind of like steel beam so yeah uh the real issue with his and electrode are, are its stats base 60 hp 70 defense 80 80 the only good stat is, is speed which is like much slower than regieleki so um I, I don't think this thing is very good personally Hisuian Typhlosion, so this is interesting, Hisuian Typhlosion is a ghost type Pokemon, or fire and ghost I should say, um, it gets Frisk, not useful in this format, uh, it's actually worse than its regular hidden ability, which is, uh, Flash Fire, so it's Blaze, this is gonna be its main ability, um, the only thing that interests me about Hisuian Typhlosion is, so it gets, it gets a stronger, this move is interesting, it can burn the target with an effect rate of 30%, so it's kind of like, slightly weaker scald but it does more damage if they're already affected by a status condition 
the real thing that's interesting to me is eruption so eruption is an incredibly powerful move and um Kazuma Typhlosion is relatively fast it I would say it was like it's fast enough with the choice scarf except for like booster bundle any speed boosting mon or, or you know uh, lucky so um that hurts it a little bit but it's relatively strong base 119 special attack is stronger than uh its, its counterpart same more or less same bulk um it's five points lower and five points less hp so i i think that this is probably not a great pokemon but it's certainly not bad i, I would like i'm gonna put it in the b tier i, I definitely think it's better than Hisui and arcanine uh samurott samurott let's pull this up here let me zoom in a little more so i can see better as well so uh sharpness so so i love samurott gen 5 is one of my favorite gens the gen i started competitive pokemon in um it's a water and dark type which is good typing it's got this new move ceaseless edge which whenever it hits um does this have increased crit rate no huh it doesn't say it has a, an increased crit rate so i'll have to look into that but yeah basically this move sets up spikes which is interesting it's only 90 accuracy which is a little concerning it's a dark type move um looking at its other moves razor shell 75 base power i assume this gets affected by sharpness and ceaseless edge probably also gets affected by sharpness so it gets aqua jet for sure it gets encore it's actually a pretty interesting pokemon in all honesty um looking through its move pool like x scissor i don't know how good that is drill run that's not that's not bad um i'm not super familiar with sharpness fully uh full disclosure oh it gets knockoff oh and sacred sword so actually th it's like its main issue is its stats um and soak huh um so honestly its stats aren't that bad hp is pretty good attack is not great but it has sharpness powering it up defense isn't great special attack is like i mean better than attack but it's not gonna help with sharpness special defense is kind of bad it's really held back by its stats but i think that it's actually got some stuff going for it sharpness makes it a lot stronger it makes it a much better pokemon and um yeah like the typing is good the move pool is good it's got good utility it's got like priority with aqua jet it's got coverage with sacred sword it's got this cool signature move that can set up spikes um so it's got it's got some stuff going for it it's really just held back by its stats it's interesting that decidui is next let's go ahead. okay so i don't know anything about hisui and lilligant um it gets oh i don't that's not sure i know some stuff so hisui and lilligant is next um it is a grass and fighting type with chlorophyll hustle and leaf guard chlorophyll will probably be the primary um ability used let's look at the stats if, it, it basically what's interesting about hisui and L lilligant is it gets a quiver dance equivalent called victory dance which raises its attack defense and speed um leaf blade sleep powder axe axe kick okay so this is like high jump kick but stronger that's really interesting um huh okay that's a really powerful move uh let's take a look at its stats ice ice spinner huh so it seems to have pretty close combat oh I, this is actually pretty interesting oh oh that's regular form so 105 base speed 105 base attack 70 75 75 i think this pokemon's pretty good actually to be honest like i, I could be totally off the money on this one but just taking a quick glance at it chlorophyll physical attacker is pretty rare especially a good one like when i think chlorophyll physical attacker i think like shift tree um yeah so <laughs> um not very good to be honest so having a fast physical attacker that's fighting type which is a great offensive type also really good because grass types typically struggle to hit like steel types uh, among others so having like a uh, fighting move there and also the setup move is good it can be sleep powder support it can be victory dance setup I, maybe a is too high for it i'm gonna put it in b actually because i it stats really aren't that great and it probably wants sun to be best but um it's an interesting pokemon and like basically my, my tier list kind of what it means s is like definitely good like s is like the best right like super 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 strong meta defining a is like also meta defining but like not quite as centralizing b is like i think these pokemon have potential they're not going to be in mainstays but they could like show up and do well at a tournament if they um are positioned well c is like uh like maybe in the right position they could be good but in most cases they're gonna be bad d is like almost always bad like you really need the stars to align for something to work here and then f is just garbo um speaking of d tier we're gonna put chestnut in here i, I like chestnut i think it's like well i don't like the way it looks uh nor do i like its evolutionary line but i think it's a cool design pokemon it's very bulky but there's a lot of good grass types um i mean even with just like even with if there was only a moongus i think chestnut would struggle to compete grass and fighting is not very good defensive typing being weak to fairy fire ice flying psychic to name a few um but there's other grass types i mean spoiler alert rillaboom's in the game now 
So, um, yeah. Uh, I don't think this thing is very good. Speaking of not very good, Delphox is going in the F tier. <laughs> uh, if Delphox is not uh, not a good Pokemon at all, its typing isn't good, its, its stats aren't well distributed, like it's not bulky enough or strong enough or fast enough to really shine, just not a good Pokemon. The Sui and Gudra. Let's take a look at this. Gudra. So this is a Dragon and Steel type, which is excellent typing, like super nice typing. Um, abilities. Let's start with that. Uh, abilities are Sap Sipper, Shell Armor, and Gooey. So... All three of these are actually very good abilities, I would say. Um, let's see here. So, Shelter is this new move. I think this is just Iron Defense. Faint. Um, I believe it gets Life Dew. Heavy Slam. Muddy Water. Body Slam. I'm fairly certain it gets Life Dew. Body Press, I see there. Uh, counter, Life Dew, Acid Armor, Dragon Pulse. So, compared to regular Gudra, it is... Slightly less HP, same attack, 30 more defense, same special. Wait, this is much better. This Pokemon is much better because it got 30 defense. And it lost, wouldn't it lose 10 HP? That is a good trade. Because Yeah, wait, that's very, very good. I'm putting this Pokemon... Uh, Steel Dragon with, with a ton of bulk. Wait, what's the special attack? 100? Oh, man, that's not what I wanted. No. Please, I just want to see Gudra special attack. 110. I'm going to be conservative and put this in B, but this is like B leaning A. Um, yeah, this Pokemon can be really good. It's got great... Gudra has amazing coverage being a dragon, like fire. Here we go. Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, right? Um, steel, the typing is better. Like, I've always... I've never really liked Gudra. I did bring it to an event at least one time, and um, we won the event with the team that we built. Uh, it's, that's Dallas 2020 with Trailer uh, and my... Uh, and Justin's, like, uh, Gigantamax Charizard team that had... Wait, no, what am I saying? It had Duraludon. I got Duraludon and Gujra confused. Okay, yeah, basically, Gujra, to me, always feels like it doesn't do enough damage. So I'm being conservative and putting it in B, because, like, it doesn't have any higher bulk, but I, I'm really hopeful for this Pokemon, and I, I would love it if it was good. Um, Avalug, Ice Table. This is Ice Rock, right? So Ice Rock is worse typing. It gets Strong Jaw, which is good. New ability, um... Take a look at its move pool. Rock Slide, Wide Guard, Avalanche, Iron Defense, Recover, Mountain Gale, which can flinch. This is basically like slightly stronger Icicle Crash, I guess. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a ton of great coverage moves. Okay, so this is regular stats. It has 46 special defense, 95 HP. Those are the big numbers. 36 special defense, 95 HP. And so it's stronger. This could be like a Trick Room Sweeper, I guess. Um, I think this thing is pretty bad but i mean wait what's the base attack 127 base attack is good it's not f it's c or d eds never mind um i'm gonna put an in d the special defense is 36 i mean i can't work with that like you know i, I can't work miracles you know what i mean uh okay decky dewey let's take a look at this thing so this is grass and fighting which as i mentioned is not a super good Ability Scrappy, which is uh, actually good because it blocks Intimidate, so that's good, if, assuming it's a physical attacker. Um, Let's see here. Triple Arrows. Which has three effects. It can crit, it can flinch, or it can lower the defense stats. So that's, and it's 100% accurate, so that's actually a really good physical move. If you don't want to use Close Combat, though you probably want to use Close Combat. U-Turn, Leaf Storm, Leaf Blade, Sucker Punch, Bulk Up. Brave Bird, so good coverage moves. Um, Tailwind, Tailwind, okay. Helping Hand, Brave Bird, like I mentioned, Knock Off. So, <sighs> Decidueye's not got great stats. Hisui and Decidueye, 10 more HP, 5 more attack, 5 more defense, 5 less special attack, 5 less special defense. And less speed okay I i'm gonna put this thing in c I it doesn't stand out to me as being great but it certainly doesn't look bad by any means and it should definitely be better than regular decidueye even though I, I think i like grass ghost more than like grass fighting but i mean it's like still solid um ursaluna this thing's going in the s tier i, I know enough about this thing to put it in the s tier uh, when i first played legends arceus i think i have a video actually talking about it way back uh when uh, bdsp came out but yeah like this pokemon is ridiculous it gets guts so uh it's you know powered up 50 percent by burn 
Uh, Bulletproof is another good ability, which prevents uh, certain moves. Headlong Rush, which is, I think it's a, like originally its signature move. Um, I'm pretty sure it gets close combat. It gets facade. It gets close combat. Like it's got, look at this. Look at this. Like, look, what do you, look, okay. Here's the really thing. Look at the stats. 130, 140, 105, 80, 50. Like you want to talk about Trick Room Sweeper? This thing is Conkledur on steroids. And, and keep in mind, 140 base attack that's powered up 50% by guts. Like th this thing is meta defining for sure. I don't need to play a single game of the format to know it like that. This is one of the strongest, this is the strongest Asuian Pokemon. Um, and one of the strongest Pokemon of generation nine, I think like it's incredibly powerful. A lot of the format, I think like you're going to need multiple answers to this Pokemon or you're just going to get run over. Uh, Sneasler. So Sneasler, when I first played through Legend of Arceus, I thought, I thought it would be bad, but I actually don't know if that's true. So Sneasler, Poison Touch, Unburden, and Pressure. Um, Dire Claw is an 80 base power of Poison move that can, it's like try attack Poison, Paralyzed, or Asleep. Okay, what's the effect rate? 50%. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's a pretty good move. Close Combat is strong. Does it get Fake Out? Is that a pre-evolution move or something? Fake Out? okay uh stats 81 30 60 80 120 this thing is actually not bad um i thought this thing was bad but it's, it's not bad i was wrong um poison fighting so it's like toxic croak i mean fake out close combat dire claw it's nice to have a strong uh physical poison move i, I actually i could see this thing being even a tier who of these pokemon the ones that i feel like the pokemon in b tier that i feel like uh strongest about are these three that i think could be a tier um I would make B plus, but I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, this is a, it's a fast and powerful poison type and fighting type, two good offensive types. You're almost always going to want to run this with Focus Ash, though. You could run, I guess, like something like a seed, like Psychic or, or Electric or Grassy Seed to, to get the speed boost from Inverted. But yeah, no, this is a really interesting Pokemon, and like Fake Out is um, super like good utility move, so I, I'm interested in this. Let's talk about Overquill. This is one of the Pokemon I'm most interested in. So Overcool is a poison dark type, meaning its only weakness is ground. Uh, it has Intimidate, one of the best abilities. Um, Barb Barrage. So this is kind of similar to the move we were looking at earlier, which does, uh, it can, it's a 50%, 50% chance to poison. And if they are already uh, poisoned, it does double damage. So that's, I think that's a really interesting move. We've seen the power of poison so far this generation with, um, with Glamora. Uh, and so, yeah, so I think that's a really interesting move. Um, Acupressure, Destiny Bond. It gets Crunch. So that's a good physical dark type attack. Um, let's see here. Icy Wind could be used for speed support. Um, poison Jab and Gunk Shot if you want different poison attacks. Here's some special attacks that are good. Haze. Uh, we know how valuable that is if Dozo's big. Acid Spray. Oh. Oh. The stats are a lot worse than I thought they were. Huh. Okay. Okay. This thing isn't as good as I thought. I, I thought that the special defense was at least 85. Um, okay. So this is an interesting Pokemon. It's like, I mean, the typing is great and that's a new Intimidator. I, I don't think it's a bad Pokemon. I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it in C. I think, I think the stats aren't good enough to really make it, make it shine. Um, I'm a little disappointed by that. I definitely thought the stats were better. Okay. Enamorous. E. Enamoramus. Okay, they were talking about Therian first. So Therian is overcoat, so no sleep powder and no weather. Um, I'm going to start actually by looking at the stats. So Therian form is 74, 115, 110, 130. Oh, man. Okay, so this is a Trick Room Sweeper. Um, why don't I think this thing had Contrary? Oh, the base form is Contrary. Okay, so you've got a very bulky very strong special attacker that is a fairy type i'm gonna put this thing in a just just from there i mean like it doesn't get it doesn't get trick room right there's no way they gave it okay they did not give it trick room thank pikachu for that um okay springtide storm is an 80 base no 100 base power 80 accurate move which can lower the target's attack stat and hits both that's very powerful i mean moon blast we know how good this is mystical fire dazzling gleam and prison um Grass Knot. I would imagine. Does it get Earth Power? Earth Power. Um, Calm Mind. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, this thing is very good. Let's take a look at the base form. So, 106 speed. It's slightly slower than Tornadus and Thunderous, slightly faster than the Landorus. Decent bulk, like 70, 80, 74 or 70, 80 is not bad, but 135 special attack, 115 speed. I, I don't see a world in which this thing is bad. Um, 
Huge charm and, and contrary is gonna be the big one. So you can't like lower its speed or lower its um Did I see superpower on this? Superpower. Okay, so it, its base attack stat with contrary is actually not bad at all, given it learns um superpower. It's probably still gonna be primarily a special attacker in in the, in um incarnate form, but yeah, uh not not bad by any any means. Um Raichu, Tapakoku is not joining. I'm putting this thing in Alolan Raichu, sorry. Putting this in D. It's not it's never been good. D is being generous, honestly. Hisui or uh Alolan Dug Trio is really bad. That's F. Alolan Persian I like a lot personally as a Pokemon, but with the power creep, I don't see it being very good. Like it basically Alolan Persian is good in formats where it's faster than most of the opposing Pokemon. Like so you can do uh like parting shot, quash, and and foul play before Pokemon move. In this format, I don't think it's going to see really any play. It's not a bad Pokemon because of its ability for a code, but I just don't see it getting a lot of play uh, at all. It's, it's not good when the power level is higher. Slowbro, this thing really never caught on. I think C is fair for it because Slowbro has great stats, but Poison Psychic is not better than Water Psychic, and Shell Sidearm is not worth uh, anything. Okay, Alolan Muck. I forgot that this thing was joining the the fray. I, I like Alolan Muck a lot personally. Um, I, it's like it's like kind of. I hoped that um Overcool would be the better version of it. Let me just check and see if it learns Knock Off because that could actually imp impact the placing. Knock Off. Okay, yeah. So it's a great Pokemon. Um, well, I guess it's a little bit worse now that Gluttony was fixed. Um, where, or not fixed, but Gluttony. We used to have the the kind of um a bunch of berries that gave you more HP. But I mean, it's, it's got a high attack. It's got really good special bulk, great HP. Defense is a little lackluster, but like, it's fine. Um, it gets Haze actually, which is interesting in case like anything like Dendozover becomes popular again. Um, yeah, just, just a solid, just a solid mod, honestly. Tauros, this thing is F. We have three better Tauroses now. Original Tauros is now the fourth worst, fourth best. It's not a very good form of Tauros. Um, okay, Galarian Articuno... I saw Jamie Boyd saying that this thing was good on Twitter, but I don't get it. Uh, actually, I mean, I kind of get it. It's what is it? Psychic. So it's psychic flying with competitive, which apparently I say weird. I'm always getting comments saying that I'm saying competitive wrong, which like, I don't know. I'm not trying to. Freezing glare effect rate is 10%. It gets freezing glare. It gets recover. It's a trick room setter. It gets tailwind, hurricane. You know, I'd be, I wouldn't have really thought too much about this Mon in all honesty, but I, I feel like Jamie's good at identifying undervalued Mons. Um, so I, if, if Jamie thinks it's good, then I'm, I'm down to think that it might be all right. I mean, it's got better typing for sure. And the stats aren't bad at all. I mean, it's a competitive Pokemon with like good stats across the board. I'll, I'll put it in B tier. It was never good in Sword and Shield, but that might also be because it's like of Dynamax. Um, and Dynamax like really influenced like how good cer certain Pokemon were. Now, regular Articuno, I'm putting in F tier. There's no way this thing is good. Let me look at um Galarian Zapdos as well. Because like this thing saw some play. I just have a hard time imagining with Regieleki around these Pokemon being great. Um do wait, do we get regular Zapdos too? Or oh we get oh we get regular Zapdos. Okay, we gotta look at both of them then. So this thing gets Defiant. Uh regular Zapdos gets static, two great abilities. Um regular Zapdos. I'm really just looking to see if it learns Tailwind. That's like the real thing. Um Thunder's Kick, lowers defense, close combat, Brave Bird. It's a good Pokemon. It gets Defiant. Like, I don't think it's great by any means, but... I mean, regular Zapdos is great. It's not bad. I'll put in... I'm putting... I'm putting uh, Galarian and B, but what's the... What is... Does it get Tailwind? Okay, it gets Tailwind. I don't see Zapdos being bad ever. I'm putting this thing in A tier. This is a great Pokemon. Moltres, I think, actually is going to have fallen the most from Sword and Shield because Dynamax was really helpful for it. So, Galarian Moltres gets, like, Nasty Plot and... Uh, and um fiery wrath uh so i i think this thing is good um nasty plot plus spread move we've seen be really good like a number of times um and dark typing is actually like kind of valuable because it allows you to resist like um i guess just she used dark pulse which actually isn't that valuable so i mean these pokemon have good stats and good typing and good abilities so i'm, I'm not like i wouldn't be shocked to see them do well regular Moltres, on the other hand that's f tier um he was not legal there's another Pokemon I saw that wasn't legal. Meloetta. Let's just get rid of these non-legal bonds right now so I can just not do that later. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. And the Rude. Where are you? The Rude. Just blending with her. Shibu. Okay. Cool. That should be able to non-legal. Okay. Galarian Slowking. Same thing as Slowbro. Like, you'd rather have regular Slowking in all honesty. So, Uxi, Azulf, and Mesprit got a new move, um, which is interesting to me. So, Uxi, Azulf, and Mesprit... 
got a new move titled Mystical Power, which is kind of like Torch Song. It raises their special attack by one. These Pokemon are rarely good. Um, you, the thing is, whenever these Pokemon are legal, Cresselia is also legal because there's four levitating psychic types from Sinnoh. Uh, and so because of that, these Pokemon are never, they never really get the chance to shine. Um, I'm going to put Uxi and Mesprit in. I'm going to put them all in C, but for different reasons. Uxi and Mesprit, uh, I feel like Azelf is probably D. Basically, these two are kind of bulky Shirkum setters where Uxi is a little bulkier and Mesprit is a little more uh, offensive. With Mystical Power, I believe that maybe these Pokemon could be good. Like, set up your special attack. Like, I don't know, like, protect Trick Room, Mystical Power, Ice Beam, and just pray you don't run into any Steel types. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It depends on meta. Azulf, like, it's really frail, and it's not so strong that you can justify it. Like, um, back in the day, like, Azulf, back before I even started playing, Azulf was good because it was faster than base 100, which was kind of the benchmark. And then it, it got Explosion, which was, or maybe Self-Destruct, I think Explosion. Um, which was like the, it was really broken in generation four. And so that was kind of the best Azelf ever was because you could just go boom and like potentially wipe out multiple of their Pokemon. I, I just can't see it being good anymore. Not with, not with power creep. Heatran, this is A or maybe even S. With Terrestrialization, I'm going to go and put Heatran in S. Um, from what I've heard of the format, Heatran's really popular. I mean, Heatran's an amazing Pokemon. And with Terrestrialization being able to turn into grass type, you're immune to Spore, uh, meaning you can't like lose, or, like you won't lose to like Amoongus with like, you know, surprise terra water and then like put you to sleep uh you resist ground you resist water so you're resisting two of your three weaknesses you're immune to fire so you don't have to worry about that flying you resist before you terrestrialize bug poison you resist um before you terrestrialize um so it's overall a really strong terra type and you resist electric i i imagine that with reggie lucky joining the the fray um electric type is going to be valuable to say the least and so uh yeah i definitely think he is going to be super good Cresselia, like, Cresselia, so here's the thing. Let me tell you about Cresselia, okay? Cresselia, back when I first started playing, which is before most of you were even born. That's not true. Um, hopefully, you were almost all born by then. Um, anyway, Cresselia was kind of the, the king slash queen uh, of the format. So, in, in 2012, it was, like, so bulky. and it, it was just so much bulkier than anything else around it that um, it was already good, but then with its amazing supportive move pool of, like, Icy Wind and Trick Room and Helping Hand and, like, this thing could do everything. Like, I won the national championships with offensive Expert Belt Cresselia because it was just such a good Pokemon that, like, even investing fully in speed and special attack, it was still so tanky that it was just so strong. Um, Cresselia is one of the Pokemon to win Worlds the most times, and for all of Generation 5 and Generation 6, it really dominated. But then in Generation 7, uh, with the like introduction of like Z-moves and more power group from Mega Evolutions, it started to, it fell off like pretty hard. Like the the Tapus were really strong um, against it. Like I feel like for the most part, because like Cresselia couldn't really damage them. And like the the just basically with Z-moves and Cresselia never running protect, it was kind of a sitting duck, uh, pun intended. And so with Generation 8, the thing is that it didn't really benefit from Dynamax, and it was so worthless at doing damage against Dynamax Pokemon because its main weakness is that it chips things down over time, not, uh, it's not doing, like, a ton of damage up front, and so with the increase of bulk and the ability to raise your def your special defense with Max Quake and, like, just, like, more power coming out, Cresselia still didn't really find uh, a way to feel, like, very viable. But now, the, the central mechanic of the generation no longer benefits offense, at least not explicitly, it benefits defense. So now you have a Cresselia with that, which has all of its types in a format where moves aren't being powered up noticeably, um in a way and it can like and it can also change its type so and they gave it a new move called lunar blessing um not lunar dance which is basically i think life do and heal status conditions uh which is wild very 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 powerful move so this is going to be the premier trick room setter without a doubt in my mind um i'm actually curious does it keep icy wind because that's going to be a big they, they gave it icy wind I thought because tutor moves are gone, maybe it wouldn't get it. I don't know. Um, yeah, this, um, this is, uh, uh, um, yeah, this is, yeah. Uh, okay, moving on. Hisuian Braviary, America Bird. Braviary. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. I think this thing is Garbo. Psychic Flying, uh, like, uh, Galarian Articuno. Tinted Lens, good ability, I mean, it's a good ability. I think this is a special attacker. Okay, it's bad. D. 
DG and I'm being generous. If you love this thing, don't yell at me. I'm being this is actually generous. This probably belongs in F. Tornadus Therian. Uh, I love Tornadus Therian, but that's from when I played single battle giraffe leagues. Uh and doubles, uh, you're going in the B tier. Tornadus, regular Tornadus. Th this thing is broken. This thing is incredible. Like, we have been using Murkrow because there wasn't a prankster tailwind setter. And they didn't even give us like Whimsicott, they gave us Tornadus. So, I mean, this Pokemon is just unbelievably like so good. And um it gets covert like you can give a uh, covert cloak now and they buffed it they gave it a buff they gave it actually a couple a couple buffs so uh covert cloak meaning you don't have to run protect incredible like really 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 good prankster tailwind we know how strong this is super fast very good bleak wind storm so now it has the ability to 100 base power spread move um that can lower the speed of the opponents with i think 20 or 30 percent 30 percent of the time so uh, this is just ridiculous. Tornadus used to have to run Hurricane or Air Slash, but now it can run Bleak Wind Storm, which is kind of a mix of the two, slightly more accurate and slightly weaker um, than than Hurricane. Um, and on top of that, they gave it... So it has Icy Wind. It already got that Chilling Water. Probably not running that because it already has um, the other things. They, they, they gave it all four weathers, which is actually very relevant, especially with Covert Cloak blocking Fake Out and Terrestrialization protecting it further. So Sun, Rain, Sand, and Snow can all be set up by this thing. So you can do something like tailwind bleak wind storm rain dance taunt protect you know whatever you want to run there um tailwind bleak wind storm rain dance yeah so so it's it's uh it's a very 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 good pokemon thunderous t uh, i mean it's not a bad pokemon i'm putting it in b thunderous incarnate so this is actually the first interesting pokemon i'm gonna put this thing in a thunderous kind of like Cresselia dominated gen 5 was like it, it was like thunderous or Cresselia as to who was the best generation six still was like uh, wait was it on top of generation oh yeah yeah it was like it was really good in generation six um and then gen seven disappeared completely because they kept nerfing it um and they added like they they nerfed basically everything about thunderous thunder wave prankster swagger um confusion like so many different things were nerfed about thunderous to the point where it saw basically no play in generation seven then in generation eight, it returned, um, but it returned as a physical defiant Pokemon for the most part. There was also like some Thunder Wave Eerie Impulse stuff. Um, yeah, but so it was it was still like kind of a shell of its former self. A might be a little generous for Thunderous in all honesty, based on how it performed in kind of the last two generations. But I have P excuse me, I have PTSD from from this thing from when I first started playing, and I will never underestimate Thunderous. This this thing could end up being basically no usage for all I know, but I I'm never gonna I'm never underestimating this thing until somebody shows me that it's bad. Rillaboom. So this might be a controversial take. Um, Rillaboom lost Grassy Glide, but it still is so good. You know what I mean? Like it's still like drum beating, which lowers speed. Wood Hammer, which is super strong. Knock off, fake out. Um, Grassy Glide is super good. Don't get me wrong, but but I'm gonna go and say, I think this is an S tier Pokemon. I mean, it, like being able to set up Grassy Terrain is very valuable. Um, especially if you you know if you build your team around it. Um, and I, I think this thing is still a really good Pokemon. Mm. It's hard to say. We've never really seen Rillaboom with Grassy Surge without Grassy Terrain, so it's really hard to say how good it is. I'm putting it in S. Uh, and Teleon, you go in D tier, you're bad. Uh, both Urshifu's are going in S for me. I mean, basically, Urshifu was only balanced around the fact that um, Max Guard blocked its uh, Unseen Fist ability. But now we don't have Max Guard. And also, we don't have a way of doubling our HP to kind of weather these incoming blows. So I think both Urshifu are going to be a huge problem. And um you know now like like uh it, it's not like you can intimidate them and there's also like covert cloak and, and there's terrestrialization to either up their damage output or, or, or make them harder to remove so you can't intimidate them you can't set reflect against them like it, it's like i don't know how we're gonna deal with urshavu um speaking of s tier aleki and you know what yeah i mean i've been talking about aleki a lot it's like like it's another Pokemon we haven't seen without um without Dynamax, but it's so strong. It it like single handedly invalidates so much of the cast. Um, and with Dynamax, you can now do stuff or sorry, Terrestrialization. You can now do stuff like uh, Terra Ice, Terra Blast. So so the ground type Pokemon that previously countered Regieleki, not anymore. Um, I do think losing Dynamax weakens it a little bit, but gaining Terrestrialization might be like a fair like a, it might even be like a more favorable trade. Reggie Drago. I'm putting this in thing in C, but it might be B. Like Regirago is not an easy Pokemon to use, but at the moment we don't have Tapu Fini. Um, and it's got like a uh, spread eruption dragon type, right? With its dragon dragon small ability. Regieleki, by the way, was nerfed with transistor being reduced from 50% damage increase to I think 30. 
But uh, as far as I'm aware, Dragon's Maul was actually untouched. I think that's the ability name. Um, so yeah, so that, it's interesting to me. I, I, I'm not sleeping on Reggie Drago. I think it could definitely be good. Um, especially like Terra Dragon Choice Specs and Trick Room or like Terra Dragon Choice Scarf or whatever. So um, we'll have to see. I don't have a ton of faith in it, but it, it, I think it has potential. And I think it was really undervalued because of when it came out and also um, just being present in a Dynamax format. Glastrier. Oh, this thing's also not legal. Um, Glastrier, I'm going to put in... I'm going to put in B. I think it could be A, but but I the thing about Glastrier is that if you want a slow trick room attacker, you probably want Ursa Luna as my current thought process. So that's kind of the reason why I don't think Glastrier is better. Um, we've seen a little bit of usage from this thing when there wasn't uh like when the when like prior to Calyrex um ice, but it was good, but like it's not it's I mean it's a good, it's a good Pokemon. It's definitely a good Pokemon, but it does kind of require a trick room. So it, it's just kind of hard to say exactly how good it'll be because a lot of people will be both using and prepared for trick room um because of Ursa Luna and I just think that in general Ursa Luna is stronger though maybe being slower than I believe Glastrier is slower than Ursa Luna um and being able to hit it for super effective it definitely might have a niche but um yeah we'll just have to see I I'm a jury's out on this one weird ear I'm a weird ear believer uh this thing is a, it's got intimidate number one which is cool um it's got trick room and it gets a cool signature move that raises its defense stats so intimidate frisk and sap sipper with intimidate being the main one you're going to use so I shield bash, bash raises your defense stat whenever it's used, though it can miss. Um, and yeah, and it gets trick room. And its stats are actually pretty good. Normal Psychic is like pretty decent typing in all honesty. Does it get body press? I don't think so. It doesn't seem like it. So yeah, not an amazing Pokemon, but the stats are pretty respectable. Good HP, defenses are fine, speed is okay, like uh, decent attack stat. It's not, it's not great by any means. But it's certainly not bad. I, I, I like it. Now, Cleavor is a Pokemon I was re really ready to uh, write off, but its signature move, Stone Axe, is that what it's called? First of all, Sharpness. Boosted power of a lot of his moves by 50%. That's very good. Stone Axe, 65 base power, 90 um, accuracy, sets up Stealth Rock. So being able to actually have a Pokemon that you can use to set up Stealth Rock and still threaten damage is like very valuable. Especially like, I mean, if you look at a lot of these Pokemon, there's a lot of flying types. There's also a lot of Focus Ash Pokemon with like, Urshavus can run it, Regilecki can run it, um, Tornadus can run it, right? Like, flying, 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 right? Like, fire. There's a lot of rock weaknesses right now. Flying, 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 flying. A lot of uh, a lot of rock weaknesses. So, Cleavor, the real question for me is about its stats. Um, I think it gets close combat. Yeah, close combat, Stone Axe, X-Scissor, Baton Pass, Helping Hand, uh, Tailwind. Tailwind is interesting. U-Turn. Um, its stats aren't amazing. Good, like, okay, not good HP, but fine HP, good attack. Decent, like pretty good defense. Special defense is a little lacking, but it's not horrible. And the speed is kind of middling. So it's got kind of a lot of average stats, except for the attack stat, but it has enough that I think it can be used. And with sharpness powering it up even more and like stone axe being good, I could definitely see Cleaver being good. I'm going to put it in B. I'm going to put it in B. Landorus T. You, you, I mean, do, you, do I need to talk about this thing? Uh, now... Is it going to be as good? I actually don't know the answer to that. I actually don't know because it's benefited from Dynamax and um and uh, Z moves, and it also like now there's there's um clear amulet, so its intimidated ability is going to be less desired, probably across the board, especially with Urshifu being probably highest usage we've ever seen them. So yeah, Lenders Incarnate, good on sand teams. Um, if there weren't if Regilecki weren't able to turn into an ice type, uh, I would say Lenders Incarnate is actually in an interesting spot because it's faster than Urshifu. It's like really good into Heatran. Um, and with Sand Force and Sheer Force, it can actually do some decent damage. So, not a bad Pokemon by any means. Uh, Cal uh not Calyrex, Spectrier. <sighs> I'm curious about this one. Ghost typing is interesting. Um, it's really fast, though not faster than Regieleki. It gets Will O Wisp. Its move pool is pretty lackluster, but it does get like Shadow Ball, um, and Nasty Plot, which are the main ones. Like Shadow Ball, Taunt, Will O Wisp, Protect is a set that can be run. I, I don't think it's gonna be great, but I, I certainly don't think it's a bad Pokemon by any means. And oh, last but not least, Basculesian this thing is worse than i was hoping it's a water and ghost type great typing with mold breaker swift swim and adaptability all of which are good um phantom force wave crash double edge head smash uh slightly different level up here okay um last respects that's right um stats actually are not so bad And, you know, its max speed stat is actually faster than Regilecki and Rain. 
So I think the male form has better stats, it looks like to me. It's like, it's interesting. I could definitely see this thing being used. I don't think it's going to be like meta by any means, but it's got some stuff going for it. Its attack is pretty high. It's got less respect. It's pretty fast in, um, in rain. Um, I, I could definitely see this thing being used at some point. So I'm going to put it in B. So yeah, that's actually, I guess that's all the Pokemon that, that we have here. I don't think any of these are going to be legal. It doesn't look like it. So yeah, again, I, I haven't played the format, so I, I think that this should be a good estimate, but I, you know, I could be wrong. I, I think the Pokemon that I feel least confident in here is actually Thunderous uh because it's just it, it it's volatile uh and, and sometimes you know it doesn't do as well as um others but um on the whole I, i'm really interested in in kind of this new format i'm interested to see how the new pokemon how good they are right i think a lot of the Suian pokemon in particular i wasn't really sure what to expect from them so um i went with like you know safer option of, of b but um I, I would love to be proven wrong and i'd love to see for the most part these pokemon kind of figure out how to how to shine and how to really do their best so let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything that seems out of place to you. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.